Perfect with no flaws at all Are the laws of a love A way of life, a way of life A way of life, a way of life Islam is a way of life Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad All praise is due to Allah We ask Allah to exalt the mention and grant peace To the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome to a new episode And a continuation on the topic of marriage I'm your host Abu Musa Bujdi Akkari With us in the studio we have Brother Salim Al-Amiri Brother Asim Al-Hakim Brother Abdurrahim Green and then Brother Muhammad Al-Sharif As promised we were deal with issues pertaining to marriage, particularly the matters of uh, finding the right spouse. What are the qualities which we should look for when finding a spouse? If you allow me. Go ahead, sir. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa ala rasulillahi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa matadibu huda. We, I think it would be best that we begin with the qualities sought after in a wife. And this is illustrated beautifully and eloquently in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, where he says that a woman is sought after for four qualities. Her wealth, her lineage, her beauty, and for her religious commitment. And the Prophet after that said, so get the one with the religious commitment, may you prosper. The literal hadith says, may your hands be dusted. So this might be a warning that if you do not, then what you're holding is dust. Or it may be taken, as the Arabs usually use these words, to mean, may you prosper. So the Prophet ﷺ is telling us that the first quality you should look for is the religious commitment. How do we define religious commitment? Well, this is a very good question. A lot, when they come to marry, they focus on two things. She wears the niqab and she doesn't listen to music. And that is it. This is what people think is the most important thing in a woman. And this is definitely wrong. Because religious commitment means that you have a point of reference where you can always turn to when there is a conflict. And likewise with the man, but we will come to discuss this later on, inshallah. If I have a conflict with my wife, and if she does not have any religious commitment that makes her forces her to comply with the truth, then we have a lot of uh, differences among us. But when we have a dispute, and she says right and I say left, and we go back to the Quran and the Sunnah, there would be no dispute, none whatsoever, because we are putting the Quran and Sunnah as our judge. Uh, let's just make a point, Sheikh, that in the West, for example, it's interesting, I don't know if this refers to Saudi, but in the West, wearing niqab is quite a commitment. Because it's not, a, it's a, not only not the norm. Wearing niqab, well, in some countries is even illegal now in the West. Unfortunately. SubhanAllah, unfortunately. But in England, even in England where it's uh, more tolerant, it shows a commitment. So sometimes that's what brothers look for. You know? And again, music is so widely available and, and there's so much misunderstanding about it. So, I mean, these criterion... Sometimes it might be a better indicator in the West than it may be just in for yeah, What Sheikh Hassan meant actually is not belittling the importance of the niqab actually, but it is not the only thing you have to look for. Okay, because it, look what is beyond that. I think a foundation maybe, and I'm asking the question as well is, when we say religious commitment, are we talking about the pillars of Islam? Like why no, did no, the Islam in general and in its comprehensive to hijab. in the comprehensive sense. That means he is a real servant of Allah Azza wa Jal. But does he that a... start at hijab? No, no. Does that start not, with Tawheed? When, when we say religious that. commitment, it's taken for granted that she's a Muslim. So we don't say, first of all, she has to pray five times a day. This is by default. When we're talking about a righteous practicing brother looking for a righteous practicing Muslimah. So how would he define that she is righteous practicing. If she's wearing the niqab and she's not praying, definitely she's a hypocrite. No, but I'm saying, okay, so if we say that the salawat al-khams, five prayers are default, and then what is religious commitment? I'm saying that is religious commitment just going back to the hijab issue? But you is know, that she what is, you guys is, are saying? Sorry to really, in the worldwide audiences watching Peace TV, you may find that for some people, 
praying five times a day and upholding the five pillars is real religious commitment. Among some communities, uh, this is not even practiced. They will still consider that person as a Muslim, and I'm sure you've, we've all got experience of people, of uh, practicing brothers and practicing sisters. I mean, when I say practicing, they fulfill the pillars of Islam, and their families are forcing them to marry, not literally forcing, but putting huge emotional pressures on them, which we discussed previously, to marry their cousin who doesn't pray, who doesn't fast, who doesn't have any type of religious commitment at all, but still has the label Muslim. So this is a real genuine issue that exists. I also noticed that as we went, you know, from different countries, you started off, you know, brothers looking for naqab. And you might find in another country, no, they don't. When they're looking for a wife, it started shifting. So I'm saying that maybe that word, uh, that deen, it, it is broader than this. And it's broader, and it's also, I think it depends on the man who's getting married as well. Maybe he has standards, that maybe he's not so firm in his salah, and he wishes to marry a woman who is firm in her salah, so that she can make him stronger. If I may comment, I stated that this was the common mistake that people do when they look for a righteous woman. I did not say that this is the criterion that one has to uphold to. I said this is one. So likewise, being practicing and righteous means that you fulfill all what comes in Islam. If a person is not committed to Islam, this is something wrong in him, but this does not justify for us to say, okay, uh, you may look for someone that is loose with her hijab or is loose with her prayers, but alhamdulillah, she believes in Allah and the Prophet even if she prays once every blue moon. No, we are saying that the, what is meant in the Prophet's hadith is in black and white. Choose the one who is religiously committed. And how do I define if someone is religiously committed or not? I definitely would say a girl or a woman who does not wear the hijab and prays five times a day she is not religiously committed so we are setting the benchmark we don't go to the west or to other countries and say that Akhi, these guys don't abide by the hijab the men don't uh, grow their beards so let's go down a little bit let's customize islam to their needs this is what we're trying to avoid we're trying to set the benchmark, and I hope... I think that that's fine from one angle, but the other angle is that it's just that the point being is that the reality of people's conditions is what are their expectations. I think this is the thing, is that it's important to understand. And I, I agree, we don't want to set the benchmark lower than what it should be. And no one here is saying that Dean should change from place to place. But what people in their various cultural situations might consider to be religious commitment is very, very different across the uh, spectrum. Uh, and, and, I, I, and I think let's be realistic yeah. here. We all know that when men go to get married, they're obviously looking for the looks. Maybe there was a time when people got married for lineage and other things, but right now, we know straight out people are marrying for looks. So the brother who's listening to this wants to know, how do I combine this? You're saying the woman of piety, and he's looking for a beautiful woman. How does it get combined? The hadith doesn't contradict. It doesn't it, contradict. I mean, the hadith doesn't deny. The hadith talks about what people prefer, that's why it prioritizes. It's mentioned that they will look for the beauty, they will look that, which is natural. But the hadith is giving them what you should, I mean, now when I'm sorting my priorities, yes, she is beautiful, she doesn't pray. Mm -hmm. Should I marry her? The Prophet ﷺ is telling you no. Because this beauty will vanish, this beauty will disappear after a few years. Yeah. Okay, she is wealthy. Maybe she overnight she becomes bankrupt. So something which is going to last, okay, and this will make your real life, the marital life, really successful. So let's be practical then. So he finds a woman that's incredibly beautiful, and her deen's not that strong. And then he finds another. No, let, let us now define the strength here. She's not that strong here. Things are relative. Does she meet the minimum? Does she maintain her prayers? Does she wear the hijab? The minimum, let us say. And then he has to work on her to build up her iman. Sheikh, can I, can I paint to you a scenario? Yeah. Let's just say we have uh, a cultural situation. Let's just say Pakistan. It could be Pakistan. It could be in India. Uh, in some places, maybe even people don't even, uh, you may be surprised, but they don't, I don't know if this is true anymore. It certainly used to be true maybe 20 years ago. People didn't even know about hijab. They thought shawal kameez. I remember 
My ex-sister-in-law used to think that shawal kameez was the Islamic dress and hijab is the Islamic dress of the Arabs. They just thought hijab was the Arab custom, this is our custom. She had no idea about the hijab. Uh, but someone may be uh, religiously committed from the point of view is, for them, what Allah says and what the Prophet says is the most important thing. But they may not be outwardly displaying things that we look as normal characteristics of this is what a good Muslim should be doing. But her heart, her intention, her, her whole way of looking at things is if this is what Islam says, I will do it. And often one of the things that is often put in front of me is that you have sisters wearing niqab, for example, who have the most atrocious manners, backbiting, uh, behaving in a really uh, terrible way, having no empathy, no compassion, you know, very virtues that are not Islamic virtues. Yet you may find a sister who doesn't wear hijab, maybe out of ignorance, but she has very good uh, qualities, very good characteristics. What are we talking about here in terms of religious commitment? Before we go on, we're going to take a short break. Stay tuned, we'll be right back, inshallah. A way of life, a way of life. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, welcome back. So you had posed a critical question. Did you intend one of the... Oh, I'm throwing it open for comment. I'm See, I think uh, it is very important that we uh, make things clear from the beginning, I mean, and with the, the objectives and the aims of such programs and such a series of discussions is to educate the Muslims. Yes, we know the situation of our ummah, and that's why we are in this mess, okay? It's the jahl, the ignorance. It is high time to call a spade a spade, okay? It is high time to educate the Muslims, not to leave them in the dark. Yes, I agree, this sister who is not wearing hijab, maybe she is doing righteous deeds that many of the practicing sisters under, and it is a reality. And many of Muslim brothers, who they, when you look at them, they don't have beads, and mashallah, they are fasting every Monday and Thursday, they have qiyam al they have such, we know these things, facts. But here, we are telling things should be, complement each other. I mean, I'm going to get married, a practicing brother, I'm always telling the, the same problem with the sisters, by the way. When she, oh, he is, mashallah, a practicing brother. Oh, mashallah, I told them in many of my talks that don't accept, the, make your criteria that his beard is hitting his navel. Oh, he has a long beard and has short thought. No. How about his akhlaq? How about his manners? How about his dutifulness to his parents? That's why they should, these things we are going to address. So here we want to strike the balance. So here when the Prophet ﷺ said, that is deen, he's talking about the Muslimah, and we know the meaning of Muslimah, one who submits to what Allah says, and the, what the Prophet ﷺ said. Yes, I have my shortcomings, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me the strength. And that's why I said, we have to be pragmatic, the minimum. Then you, try to help her and to build up her iman and inshallah things will come. Truth is, there's, it seems that there's a lot of a misconception among the Muslims when it comes to identifying righteousness because we have the outer appearance and we have the inner qualities and characteristics. And I've found, as you have found probably in your da'wah expeditions, that some people are totally concerned with the outer appearance while ignoring the essence and, and the substance. And on the other hand, some people say it's all about the substance, the outer appearance makes no difference. And the truth is, it's a combination of both. This hadith comes to my mind. And I think when we talk about the religious one, for me, subhanAllah, this is a very powerful and important hadith for all of us to think about. The companions came and asked the Prophet wasallam about a woman. She said, they said, this woman, she does a lot of extra prayers and she does a lot of extra fasts, but she has an evil tongue and annoys her neighbors. And the Prophet said, SubhanAllah, he said, she is a person of the hellfire. A person of the hellfire. And they asked about another woman. They said she doesn't do a lot of extra praying. She doesn't do a lot of extra fasting. And she just, something to her neighbors. And the Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam said, she's a person of the paradise. And I think here's the thing, is that when we talk about the religious one, this hadith gives us a very important clue. Because unfortunately, a lot of us imagine that religiosity is performing a lot of rituals. And this is what a lot of Muslims do. They perform rituals. The salah is a ritual they go through, but 
does this salah really connect them with Allah? And what's the proof of the pudding, as we say? Look at the person's character. Look at that, like you said, are they, do they obey their parents? What is their akhlaq? How do they treat them? What does their neighbor say about them? You know? So I think these are the things we need to look at. But Sheikh, what I believe is a religious commitment is what I said in the beginning that it is having a point of reference. It is the submission, the willingness to go to the Quran and Sunnah and abide by it. So when I say this, I do agree that there might be a woman who is, mashallah, excellent character, very kind, very generous, but, and, and everything else is good, but she doesn't abide by the hijab. She doesn't, maybe she does not pray on time, but she prays. So if I would to say, Akhi, you go as a an imam of a masjid or a da'i and marry her and be hopeful and wishful that inshallah she will become a practicing muslimah in the future. There is a big problem and that problem is that I'm gambling. There is a possibility that she would have three or four kids and becomes more defiant and insisting on not wearing the hijab, on not practicing as Allah instructed us in the Quran and Sunnah. My problem is with religious commitment is that a lot of the Muslims nowadays don't refer to the Quran and Sunnah. They refer to everything else but the Quran and Sunnah. So they bend the rules and sometimes break the rules. My point of view is that if you're getting married to someone, this should be on the top of your priority list. And that is, a boy or a girl is their point of reference, the Quran and Sunnah, they have no dispute. But if I say this is what Allah says in the Quran and he, she says, my madhab says something else. Imam so-and-so in that country says something else. So this is not religiously committed person. And we will come, inshallah, to discuss more qualities of the wife other than this, inshallah, which would... I have a different approach because I know we're talking about, you know, the qualities of a woman that she should have religious commitment. But somebody came to me, I was doing like a goal setting workshop. And this is the type of brother that's always going around telling people, I want to get married, I want to get married, I want to get married. He likes to show off that, that he's not married and he's looking. So then after this goal setting workshop, he comes to me and he says, you know, it was number one on my list. And then I jokingly said to him, I said, what, Jannah was your number one goal? And then he felt shy and he said, no, marriage was his number one goal. But then I realized that maybe let's step back from the woman's religious commitment. How about we make this person's number one goal being Jannah? Then when he goes to approach marriage, then he can say, is this woman going to help me get to Jannah? Because that's my number one goal, not marriage. We had discussed that. I believe we built the, we built the whole discussion on that very foundation. In the very early episodes, we spoke about the relationship with Allah. And I believe you mentioned that the, the marriage institution is one which is based on uh, taqwa based on the objective of life. And don't get me wrong, if you can get someone with all these qualities, beautiful lineage, wealth, and religious no, commitment, no. then mashallah, tabarakallah, count, count me in. You know what Muhammad Sheikh Mahan was saying, mashallah, I, I think, uh, you know what I find sometimes is, is that um, the language we use uh, is very um, easy to use as a, even a simple word, like religion. If we say the word religion today, Words trigger in people's minds certain concepts. And unfortunately, because we live in a very secular age, in very secular materialist societies that have divided religious life from normal life, when you say the word religion, what comes to people's minds is a set of rites and rituals that have no real bearing on one's life at all. And, and for many people, this is religion, whether they're you know, Jews, Muslims, Christians, it's just some rituals I go through. This is the problem. So I think Sheikh Mohammed was saying, which is a very nice point, is if you rephrase it, if you think of it in a different way, because you marry the religious one, a person will think, okay, make sure she's doing this and that, and she has follows all of these. And as you made clear, Sheikh, we weren't, no one was saying that you were suggesting they have to wear niqab, but it's an outer manifestation of religiosity, but it doesn't mean the person is really has this connection with Allah. And so I love the way that Sheikh Muhammad's rephrased it, you know. Okay, is she going to help you get to Jannah? This is the question, isn't it, really? Because that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's saying that. Is she going to help you get to Jannah? But hold on a second, though. I agreed. Yeah, let's look at it from an, another, a third angle. Uh, how are Allah, the deen of Islam is one which is simple in a sense and practical. 
And if you go through the Quran and the Sunnah and the statements of the Sahaba, they made the behavior of the people, the appearance of the people, an indication to the essence. It's not a guarantee, but it, Umar, when the people said, he said, we treat you as we see you behave. And if you show what us about goodness... about this woman I mentioned in the hadith? She prays a lot, she does a lot of extra fasting. Correct. So uh, externally, you look at her religiosity. No, no, that, that would be the foundation. There are exceptions to the rule. It, it doesn't mean that you see, okay, she, let's say a sister standing somewhere and a brother's trying to find a wife. He sees a sister with a niqab. Okay, she must be on good terms with Allah. No, that is an indication. After that indication, there's verification. Now you go through a process where you can identify whether it is a bunch of, you know, rites or rituals that this lady is engaged in or whether there's a substance for her iman. But turn it around, usually, and this is how the deen functions unless there are, if there's appearance-wise, there's lack of commitment, then that indicates that the jawhar, the essence, there's a critical issue there. And I think it's so important to remember that of all the people watching, plugging into Peace TV, okay? Sheikh had it right from the absolute beginning. You had it right on the spot. In Saudi Arabia, what criterion of righteousness is that? Wearing niqab in Saudi Arabia. It's not a criteria. It's normal for everyone to do it. And women do it customarily. I've seen it. They, put, they come into the airplane with niqab. They're flying to England. Woof. It all comes off and to barrage. They're showing all the hair and this and that. And Some whatever. of them, not all. No, I didn't. Of course not all of them. Astaghfirullah. But I'm meaning I've seen it. The niqab is just a cultural practice. What judgment, what criterion is that of righteousness? Nothing like you said. It's nothing. So uh, Abu Mus'ab, in this case, the outward appearance doesn't mean anything. It, it has you know? to. But still Islam made that a reference. And, but it, brother, in another place you'll have a culture where the niqab, they don't even know what is niqab. No, no if the issue is not the niqab, brothers and sisters. The issue what Abu Mus'ab meant, that there is always, and this is true, this is our belief, there is a link and there is a relationship between yeah. the, uh, the external and the internal, which is a fact. Whatever helps the people to judge you. Yes. Okay, so this. Okay. So always there is this. And that's why the nifaq comes. Yeah. What is hypocrisy? Hypocrisy when what is shown is different from what is inside. So our Islam, that both, so when I see a person appears to me he is, mashallah, committed to the deen and all this. So I have to take it, and unless it is proven otherwise, right? This is our deen. Sheikh, I want to throw, a, I want to throw something into the, into the mix here. Abdurrahim, the time is over, and it's hot. The temperature is high. He's enjoying it. Now. Yes, that's why we're going to discuss this in the very next episode. We promise we will continue, inshallah, this hot discussion. So we look forward to you joining us in the very next episode. Zakum Allah khair for tuning in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.